In this video, I'm going to show how to diagnose trouble with a lack of resistance on this Nordic Track recumbent exercise bike. And I'm going to show you how to do it without any special tools beyond what's shown here. Screwdriver, socket, Allen wrench. And the Allen wrench is actually optional. Now the problem is that in order to get access to the guts of the machine, most people think that you need to take the crank off. And that is not a trivial thing. Behind this bolt is a special bit that requires something called a crank puller, which is not something most people own unless they're bike enthusiasts. Turns out you don't need that. You can get in there without taking off the crank. And the trick is to rotate the plastic like I've done here. Now, to make this easier, what I've done is I've removed the console, as you can see. That part, removing the console, takes the Allen wrench. You can actually leave the console on, it just requires a bit more bending of the plastic. So the idea is you take all the screws out, and from this position it's real easy to see where the screws are. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, A, B, C, whatever. Maybe about five screws. The surprising one is that there's one on this side, down here, which you wouldn't necessarily guess. Take all those out, and then you can rotate the whole piece of plastic. Now you have to get this piece of plastic past here. So that's the only thing that's really tricky. It's a little bit, uh, it feels like you might break something, but if you're careful and you wiggle it a lot, you can get it to come loose. And then this whole thing just rotates like that. So once you've done that, you can get to the mechanism that controls the resistance. And this is the mechanism. Basically what's going on here is that this is a permanent magnet and this is a piece of metal that uh, I guess is iron. And as the metal passes by this magnet, it creates eddy currents, and so you get resistance. And the closer the magnet is, the bigger the eddy currents and the bigger the resistance. Now, the problem that this particular unit was having is that it didn't have any resistance and you couldn't adjust the resistance. And the thing is that the way these machines are designed, when you shut the power off, it leaves the, the magnet in its normal place. When you turn it back on, it pushes it down as far away from the flywheel as it can get, leaving you with no resistance. So it's not really that the, the mechanism, this magnet is somehow broken, it's just it's in the wrong place. Now you might think that the reason it's in the wrong place is the part that moves things around, and that's this part here, which is turned by a motor that's in here. Now, in this particular unit, I could push all the buttons I want on the console and nothing ever happened with the motor, which might make you think that it's the motor. But before you replace the motor, and this part, this whole assembly here is about 50 bucks, what you need to do is check and make sure that it's actually broken in here. The way you can do that is you can take this plug here apart and you can get access pretty easily to two pairs of wires, this blue one here and this yellow one. I'm going to pause and pull it apart. And there you go. Now those are a little hard to get to, but you could either try to connect to them there, or if you have a jumper cable, I don't mean jumper cable like a car, let me show you. I mean a jumper cable like this DuPont connector. You can actually slide that right into the hole, and then you can use just a pair of double A's, doesn't matter what the polarity is, to try and turn the motor that's in here. And in my unit, it turns out that the motor works just fine. There's no problem with the motor. So I can increase and reduce the resistance without any problem. So that suggests very strongly that this is not the part that you need to replace and that the problem is in the console. Now, in my particular case, I didn't care about that. I decided to just throw away the console and extend the wires from here to an external location where I could just use a motor uh, control system, <laughs> which is a fancy way of saying it, and batteries to uh, adjust the resistance whenever I felt like it in a somewhat cumbersome but still completely effective manual system. So here it is all put back together except for the console, which we don't need. And I'm going to demonstrate how to actually control the motor for the resistance in this state. So this wiring harness is the one that has the two wires that we care about. And it's on the end, this blue and yellow wire. And in order to get easy access to those in a non-destructive way, 
I plugged a pair of jumper cables into those pins. So that means that those pins are brought out here where we have easy access to them. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a AA battery pack. I just need two of them in order to get enough voltage to be able to operate the motor. This particular battery pack exposes positive and negative here. You could also do something that involved uh, more jumper pins here. For instance, this sort of jumper pin that allows you to plug these guys in like that, but I find that too fiddly. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect things here. So you put one jumper pin here, and I'm going to be quiet, and maybe you can hear the motor operate. I don't know if that's going to be picked up, but in any case, I just uh, moved the motor so that it has less resistance now by touching those two contacts briefly. And so now I don't need to have anything connected. It's going to be permanently in that position until I decide to make contact again. Now it changes relatively quickly, so you just want a little momentary uh, contact there. And eventually I intend to set it up with a pair of switches so that it's just as easy to change the resistance as it is when you have the console connected. But honestly that's going to take a little bit of soldering and stuff. So maybe I'll just decide that this is good enough since I don't tend to change the resistance that often. In any case, I consider this to be a pretty easy fix. And for most of you, you're going to need basically no additional equipment to do this. So I think it's definitely worth considering rather than throwing away the whole exercise and bike and be buying a new one. Because I think this is a pretty nice uh, piece of equipment. And honestly, I kind of like it better without the console. It makes it much easier to do things like watch TV with it. So in some ways, I think this is actually an upgrade. Hopefully this has been useful to you. Uh, and of course, please leave comments with your ideas about how to do this better. Thank you.